All right, now, as we're continuing kind of cleaning up and tying up these loose ends, here's another construct I need to tell you about. Whew, this one's challenging. All right, we've talked about barrier synchronization. We've talked about critical sections, and we've talked about the most basic form of atomic. There are times you need something even more low level, something where you have even greater control over how you do the synchronization. For this, we have locks. Now, the lock is kind of the lowest level of mutual exclusion uh, synchronization in concurrent programming. So basically, if you hold the lock, you're happy and you can go off and do what you want. If you try to grab a lock and someone else is holding it, you wait until they're done, then you can grab the lock. But since it's a function API and you build a lock as an actual lock variable, you can do all sorts of low-level details with it that you can't do with the high-level critical section. So we have a collection of runtime routines and we have a lock variable type. The lock variable type is defined in the, in the include file omp.h and it's lock underscore t. So I have a function omp init lock to initialize that lock variable. I have a function omp set lock, which is what I call when I want to grab the lock and I want to hold it, I want it to be mine, so I'll do the set lock. And then when I'm done with the lock, I have a function omp unset lock. That says, hey, I'm done with this lock, someone else can grab it, all right? Then I have omp destroy lock, which says when I'm done, I want to free up the space to hold the lock. That's the destroy lock. Now, there's a subtle little detail. I'm hesitant to go into it now until you've seen an example, but I'm going to just for completeness, because if I don't now, I'll forget about it later. It's called OMP test lock. Now, if I call OMP set lock and someone else is working with it, I'm going to sit and wait until the lock's available. Okay, that can be really inefficient. Remember, anytime my threads are sitting and waiting, useful work's not happening, the parallel performance of my program goes down. I don't like that. So what test lock does is it's a logical function. And it says, is this lock available? If it is available, it immediately returns, and then you can set the lock. If it's not available, it immediately returns and tells you the lock is not available. So I can go off and do something else before I try to grab the lock. Let me give you an example of using locks. And this is going to be a little bit involved, so hang with me for a while. But if you want a complete understanding of OpenMP, you got to know this stuff. Okay, here we go. I have a data structure. I have a histogram. You all know what a histogram is. You, you sample some data. When you sample the data, you assign it to a bin in the histogram, and then you increment the bin in the histogram. So when I'm, when I'm all done, I've got this table, and the table tells me how many things fell into each one of the bins. So I want all of my threads in parallel to update the bins in the histogram. That's got race condition written all over it. I mean, imagine what happens if, you know, bin number four, if I'm going through and I want to increment bin number four, well, another thread's going to read bin number four, and then it's going to increment it, and they clobber each other. It's a mess. So I have to have mutual exclusion update to those bins of the histogram. If I put that in a critical section, though, I've serialized my whole program. If every time I access the data structure of histogram, I have mutual exclusion, then I will get no parallel performance. But what if, think of it, in the typical use of a histogram, most of the time, if it's a big histogram, let's say there's, you know, thousands of bins, the chances of any two threads trying to update the same histogram value at the same time is pretty darn low. So we call that an uncontended lock. I lock each bin of the histogram, and the chances are they will be uncontended. Then I go to test that lock, and no one else will hold it, and things will sail right through. All right, so that's the design. I'm going to build a histogram, and I'm going to put a lock to each bin of the histogram. So here's the code for that. So pragma OMP parallel 4, I want to do this in parallel. What I'm going to do is I'm going to initialize the locks for the array of locks to attach to the histogram. And so that's what you see right there. Inside the loop, I have OMP init lock. So now we come into the next parallel for loop, where I'm going to actually go through and sample some data to decide which bin it goes into, and then I will update that bin of the histogram. And so you can see OMP set lock for that histogram lock value. If it's not being held, I can go through and do that update. If it is being held, I will wait until the lock's released. 
All right, so now I update and then I release the lock. I unset the lock so someone else can grab it. And once again, the fact is that I have mutual exclusion. No two threads can do that update at the same time. But the chances of that happening, of there being contention on the lock, are low if my histogram's large. So this is a really elegant and cool piece of code for giving me mutual exclusion and hopefully will run very well in parallel. Then when I'm done, because I've created all this stuff in memory to hold that array of locks, I better destroy them. So you can see I now have a loop at the end where I destroy all the locks I just created. So that's a case where I would use locks. We're getting into advanced programming here, but gosh, you know, I want all of you when you finish this to go off and do advanced programming. So I want you to know about that. Mm -hmm.